Welcome, welcome to Loveline. Loveline is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Well, I don't approve of it. Loveline. The world's therapy couch since 1984. Loveline. Dr. Drew Pinsky, medical doctor, philosopher, philanthropist, certified addiction specialist, the king of transformational media. Simone. Simone Diaz, psychosexual and relationship therapist, and a former model who's dedicated her life to helping couples make sex fun again. Loveline. Mike. Mike. Mike Catherwood, a former addict, current fitness guru, the ringmaster of the psychosexual addictive personality. Big Tom. Love line. 1 800 Love 191. Yes, yes, yes. Get on with it. Yeah, it is Love Line. What's up, everybody? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, buddy. 1 800 Love 191, the number to call us here in the Trojan Studios. Go ahead and give us a call if you have a problem. You want to run by two very competent professionals, Dr. Drew Pinsky and Simone Bien. No problem too big. There is absolutely no problem too small something is embarrassing you to talk about with your peers or your parents or your friends, whatever it may be, I got just the people for you. They're sitting right in front of me, so pick up your phone and dial 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. The open forum question for tonight. Girly things that men do in secret. Girly things men do on the sly. You try to act like a manly man when everybody's looking, but you got that one girly thing that you do when no one seems to be looking. What is it? If you've had a, if you're a lady and you've had a boyfriend or a husband or a grandpa or whatever it may be that uh, you found out he does that one girly thing, go ahead and call us up. If you're a guy and you want to feel free to use this show to admit that you do this girly thing, then go ahead and call us up. That uh, open forum happens at the top of the next hour in one hour from right now. Very special guest tonight. Very special for many reasons. One, because he's an incredibly smart, funny guy, overwhelming with talent. He is also the man who, alongside Dr. Drew, helped make this show what it is, responsible for the golden era of Loveline. I'm, of course, referring to the ace man, Adam Carolla. His new book, Not Taco Bell Material, I have had a chance to read uh, a good chunk of it, not all of it, but uh, segments of it. And uh, he, it is, you know, everything you'd expect from one of Adam's books. It is fantastic. Not Taco Bell Material, again, the new book. Adam will be joining us very soon, but right now, your calls. Am I right, Simone? Am I right, Dr. Drew? Whatever you want, call us up. Jenny. Thank you for calling Loveline. What's up? Um, okay, so I have a boyfriend, and everybody is telling me that I flirt too much. Mm-hmm. Wait, where are you right now, getting Jenny? Out of, getting out of her car. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Sorry. Drew, you're good with the sound effects. Yes. <laughs> Do carry on, Jenny. Sorry, I was slightly distracted. We, we hope to hear some smoke alarm. That wasn't exactly the, that <laughs> elusive <laughs> yes. a sound effect. There, we, we hope to hear some smoke alarms tonight that need batteries. Just, uh, just, just to send Adam just, mad. Yeah, <laughs> Jenny, uh, what can we help you with? Um, how do you how do you know if you flirt too much? I think I'm just smiling and being friendly, but everybody says that it's flirting. Everybody, who's everybody? <clears throat> um, my coworkers. There hasn't been one that says differently. I think that's a pretty good bet. Is it males and females? Uh, there's one guy in the back, but he's my best friend. I think he's just kind of giving me a hard time. But The rest are all women? Yeah. Do you work in a some sort of environment where there are only women? Um, not really. No, there's a, um, I mean, there's a lot of guys come in, but mainly that work there, yeah, it's all just girls. All right. So they do they feel competitive or somehow, um, you know, envious of what you're doing? Um, don't know. It, this, Jenny, Je- it's just sort of confusing. It, it, it is. It, yeah. So let's just home in, Jenny, yeah. on what they're picking up on. Because I actually uh, encourage flirting with people, but just tell me what you're flirting. Are you showing people your bra? Are you sticking no. your tongue down their throat? Are <laughs> no. you? <laughs> I don't touch anybody or anything like that. Okay. Like, not even like a hug. Maybe a high five, but I mean, I give everybody so you're high fiving people. Uh, don't go so far. I mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, really, people are going to start calling you okay. uh, a whore. Maybe, maybe we better understand the environment. <laughs> what, what is? The, is it? Are you in a? You know, I mean, is... are you working in a law firm? Bathhouse. An accountant. <laughs> What is it? Doctor's office. Doctor's office. Okay. Well, they may be telling you something there that, that they're concerned about your boundaries. I mean, that, that actually is a very serious issue in a doctor's office because there are people there that are ill, both psychiatrically and medically. And if you don't have good boundaries there, that, I mean, you are really creating an unsafe environment. So this is a totally special sort of an environment. 
But Dr. Drew, there's a difference between how you frame it and how um, Jenny is being told. Because to for her to be told that she's flirting, it's very different from, oh, we need appropriate behavior. We can't be too friendly with, you know, co-workers in front of patients, etc. That That's a big difference, isn't it? Uh, it? It is. Well, how did they present it to you? It's just that um, with the patients that come in. Yeah. that I'm flirting with them. Yeah. But oh. They're, they're, they're telling you to, I, yeah. They're, they're telling you to maintain, what kind of what kind of physician is this? What kind of doctor? Um, it's a medical marijuana. A medical marijuana dispensary. So not real doctor's office. Oh my goodness. So we don't have any idea what's going on here. Um, doctor's office. I love. Well, it, there there may be a physician running it, though. And, I understand and they, that, and but they may be especially sensitive to, uh, you know, how people perceive them. Uh, uh, I, it's just funny to me that she led us to believe, like, just the words "doctor's office" is where she left I know, it. I, know. I was expecting We're, a cardiac arrest. Yeah, surgeon. like she's walking into <laughs> just, your private yeah, practice and she's going around high fiving random pat- uh, patients. You no, know, there's a bunch of stoners coming in for their prescriptions, and she's, <laughs> but they, but they're, and they're you know, probably gorgeous. And she does need to be careful with her boundaries there. That's that, that's for sure. They, she could get into trouble fast because you know people are coming in. They they need to maintain uh, what it is they do and do nothing else. Um, Jenny, listen. J- let's just not get too complicated here. You need to maintain a professional environment. If you are your, if you don't understand what that is, you don't pr- have a self perception where you can understand what that is. Take direction from other people. Don't be willful. Stop it. Just learn how to behave in that environment and do what they tell you. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Holy mackerel! <laughs> I don't know whether I feel guilty for laughing, and it's not. Sorry. No, you have every right. I mean, <laughs> that, that, that whole call took a total oh, to, like wonderful. left turn. Hey, Crystal, thank you for calling. I think love it's line. great that they have marijuana dispensaries for some people. Doug Stanhope. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Oh. Drew. Nice. Uh, Crystal, what's happening? Oh, hello. Um, I am in a long term relationship with my fiance, obviously. But um, when he was 18, he was diagnosed with juvenile diabetes. And since we've been together, um, we've had, I guess, an odd sex life. I came from a relationship where we had sex probably every day, if not more than that. Um, But since we've been together, we have sex maybe once a week, once every other week, if I'm lucky. I don't know if I should believe him and that it is actually due to his diabetes or if it's... um, Is he he also overweight? Is he? Well, wait a oh no, he's he's six five and weighs about one sixty. Wait, Crystal, why would he be lying about that? That's that's bizarre. Um, well, when we first started going out, um, there was a red flag, and he was cheating on me. Um, and so I was like, oh wow, maybe. Yeah, and guess what, Crystal? Guys that cheat generally double down on the sex, so you won't notice it. Okay. Okay, so stop it. He's All he's right. got a chronic, severe medical condition that's of a life-threatening and life-threatening thre- right. shortening nature. And if he went through a period where he was not, he did not have his blood sugar under control, or if he still doesn't have his blood oh, sugar under control, it, it's un- it's still not under control. Um, okay, then then the first thing that then there's no way he it's, it's amazing he can function sexually. Okay. So stop right. it! Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You're, well, you're, I wasn't completely sure, and this I, guy has a life-threatening medical illness, and you're making him feel bad for it. Mm. And he began, it's affecting something he's obviously, I'm sure, right. as a young male, very concerned about, which is sexual performance. He, right. Listen, and if it keeps stays uncontrolled, the next thing that's going to go is his erectile function. It's going right. to go soon. It has nothing to do with you. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you so right. much. Okay. Thank you, Crystal. Adam Carolla joining us in a bit. Right now, we're talking to Jason. Jason, hello. Hi. How are you doing? Doing good. What's up? Um, I just had a couple questions, especially for Dr. Drew. I'm dealing with my mother-in-law, who's an alcoholic, and just recently, as about five or six days ago, she was pulled picked up by the cops because she was had her car aimed at the at the river <clears throat> she's had uh she left us a suicide note she actually lived in our basement apartment and i'm just wondering uh what we can do uh if you've got any tricks or something not tricks but anything to help us uh deal with her and you know she doesn't want to go get help she's been a detox god i don't know how many times and never wants to go for full treatment afterwards and uh, at this point, because she lives in our house, even though it's a separate apartment, uh, we got two little kids around the house, and, you know, they want to spend time with their grandmother, especially my four-year-old daughter. And I just, I'm scared. I don't want her around her grandmother, basically. It's just it's dangerous. Certainly, I, certainly not alone. She shouldn't be around her, that's for sure. 
No, and I, I, don't, I don't understand you know, why she's allowed to return home without treatment. Um, your guess is good in mine. We've we've talked to counselors that were there. They've recommended that she stay. They just can't make her stay. She's got to make that choice. And yeah, but how? Why is she allowed to come back to your house? Well, my wife is, you know, feels guilty, and I know from you know I just started listening to your show about a year ago, and I know that uh, you know we've been enabling her. We've right. You know, so if you don't allow her to come home, she'll go to treatment. Well, that's what we're trying to do. Is basically, I, I've had I had it up to my you know eyeballs with this. And okay, so she does. She does, very simple. We'll talk to you in a couple of weeks, mom. That's it. Stay in treatment. No conversations. No rationalizing. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Enjoy. Very simple. And you, in the meantime, go to a program called Al-Anon. Yeah, we do. I've uh, from listening to your show. I got my wife to go. Great. Uh, and and you go. And uh, you. We live in a small town of about four thousand people, and. I work at night driving a truck, and so I can't get to the meetings. I get it. Uh, I get it. It's in the hard. evening with her. So. Okay, that's hard. Um, but you know, you don't you don't take her back. You just say no. We'll see you in a couple weeks. That's it. You don't you don't get into conversations about it. Her life depends upon it. She's now. I, first of all, I don't understand why she's been not being held against her will. She just tried to kill herself. She should be held for at least three days, if not fourteen days. Yeah. Well, well it's, he's it's, in Canada. It's Maybe they. They sent her to detox for four days, and then that's it. Like they yeah. said, you know, should really, they were going get to get her into a program and everything. Okay, and good. And you say, bye, Mom. See you in a couple weeks. That's it. Period. No conversations. No, we'll pick you up. Just we'll see you in a couple weeks. That's it. Love you. Yeah. Goodbye. That's it. It's very, very simple. You Do really don't have to get involved in any conversations. Dr. Just Drew, can I just ask a question sort of on behalf of Jason, which is going through my head, which you've sort of already answered, but when you're dealing with an a addict who is – suicidal um and you know does exactly as jason's mother-in-law did places the car you know mm -hmm. in front yeah, of the yeah. thing. in al-anon don't they say look you can't take away the responsibility of the addict you know you have to let them hit rock bottom mm -hmm. how does jason deal with that you put him in the hospital and you say well, see you a couple weeks okay you fine. don't you don't talk to somebody who's not in their right mind you don't Fine. have conversations. You, and you don't, you don't protect them. them. No, you just goodbye. We'll see you in a couple weeks. You need treatment. You're going to die without it. It's very, very matter of fact. We love you. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Okay. And then hopefully she'll be more in her right mind and able to understand that she needs a lot more treatment. Because by protecting them, then it doesn't help them. It's, it, by protecting them, you kill them. All right, Jason. Clear, uh, directly. You're, involved, you're a part of the problem now. Now you have somebody with a life-threatening illness that you're making worse. Thank you for the call, Pretty Jason. Simple. Good luck, man. That's a tough situation to be in. Ah, uh, next, straight ahead, the Ace Man returneth. Returneth here to the Trojan Studios, a place where he helped make Loveline what it is. We're talking about the one, the only, Adam Carolla, his new book, Not Taco Bell Material. Fantastic stuff. Yes, Dr. Drew? I want to. I, I like asking tw the Twitterverse for uh, suggestions for the sound off, so I want to ask that again. I'm going to do that on a semi-regular basis because the guys come up with great suggestions, so go to at Dr. Drew on Twitter and tell me what I should sound off about tonight, and uh, I will pick the most popular topic. There you go. There as long as it doesn't involve the San Francisco Giants, because Mike will actually... Yeah, yeah, I'll kill you. ...shiv me, yeah. Uh, uh, tweet Dr. Drew at Dr. Drew, and remember, there's two places you need to go right now, lovelineshow.com and adamcarolla.com. The Ace Man joins us next on Loveline. Don't worry, don't worry. Loveline will return right after these words of wisdom. You mean uh, more advertising? Yes.
I'm going to have to poach this man who is the undisputed king of the podcast. I'm going to have to poach his catchphrase because it is, in fact, right now time to get it on. Got to get it on. Everybody put your hands yeah. together today. You have no choice, no choice but to get it on. Not open for debate. Got to get it on. <laughs> Adam Carolla joins us. His new book, Not Taco Bell Material, available everywhere books are sold. In fact, if you're here in Southern California, head on down to the Barnes & Noble at The Grove tomorrow, June 19th. And then over the weekend, he'll be in Orange County signing the book at the Barnes & Noble in Irvine, Irvine on Saturday. And then Sunday at the Huntington Beach Barnes & Noble. Is that Sunday? Yes, it Jesus is. Jesus Christ. I remember agreeing to that. <laughs> that was like Friday. Well, anyway, we'll work it out. Adam, how has mm. now that, uh, how old are your children? Uh, they're six. They just turned six. How has six years of being a parent changed the way you look at things? Because a lot of what is in uh, Not Talk About Material seems to revolve around your relationship with your parents. Um, you know, I, I've always said, you know, that whole thing about like you have to be a parent to know what a parent's, it's such BS. If you're smart, you'll you'll know what a parent thinks. Sure. It's not that hard. You just imagine yourself caring for someone who craps themselves and costs a lot of money. And there, everyone's a parent. So that whole thing of like, you know what? Now that I'm a parent, I understand. It's it's a load of crap. I, I, really, I really feel like if you have a couple of brain cells that rub together, you can understand, you know, what it's like to lose a child, what it's like to hope for a child, what it's like to be proud of a child. It's all the stuff you can imagine. And... You know, being being a parent hasn't changed anything for me. I have square footage, I have money right. to throw at the problem, and I have two TiVos, and those are that's very important things. And I don't really have a whole ton of rules with my kids, other than I don't want to be a bummer in front of them. That's the thing. It's rarely that's your, that's your latest it's, thing. It's, that's your new thing. It's not that new. It's it's well, I mean, it's relatively new because they're they're pretty new, but. I'm so tired. You know, we talk about. Well, it's a fun. Wait, now I'm going to stop you because it's. Oh, this, it's boy. No, listen, because eh. it's. The, a pa- whatever happened is growing up, it's always the opposite. We, we either do the same thing or do the opposite. We are affected in some powerful way by how you grew up. And you grew up around depressed, stoner, food stamp, mm-hmm. uh, unable to get a job parents who were a, mm-hmm. a total downer. Yeah. So you're not going to be that. You're going to be the fun guy. Well, yeah, but. Uh, no, I'm not. You know, it's weird. I'm not the fun guy. I'm just the guy who wants them to know that I'm happy that they're on this planet, and uh, we're gonna have a dance party. And nice. Yeah, and uh, naked dance party, mm-hmm. but a dance party nonetheless. Wow. And eh, I'm gonna be fun, inappropriate guy. <laughs> Maybe smells of Crown Royal, <laughs> but either way, it's gonna be a party and a and, fine fart. And and I don't, you know, my feeling with the kids is, yeah, my parents were a bummer, and I hate that, and we never talk about it. It's always like, are you educating them? Are you there for them? You know, what about college? What about, you know, second language? What about playing the viola? Don't be a bummer in front of your kids. Like, don't freak them out by being depressed, being upset, just being, you know, you can have your feelings in front of the kid, but there's so many parents, and there's so many people they just go through life sort of unhappy, bummed out, pissed off. You kind of owe it to the people around you to knock it off. Do you think if you had had a different childhood experience, you would be less aware of being not being a bummer? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure of it. I mean, you know, just like, you know, when you have scleroderma, you become interested in that. And then you become like you, you probably know more than most doctors about it if you have that particular condition. So... Yeah, I but I would I wish that it would be a little more of a societal calling. And again, it's it's one of those things where it sounds like, you know, they do that talk to your kids, read to your kids and all that kind of stuff. How about have fun with your kids? Now, it's interesting because I actually met with the British government and um, with a, an American couple who were advised the American government and then were advising the British government. And what they found out from research was that if couples were getting on, then they could parent well. Right. Rather than telling people how to be parents. So in your relationship, what I'm hearing implicitly... No, he has a horrible relationship. Is Regardless, that horrible. you must, you must really work together <laughs> no, well no, as a so, team. No, it's horrible. Yeah. No, yes, I'm fine. <laughs> no, you're right. No, <laughs> listen. No, y- you know, yes, you have to do that. I don't know. I don't know if it's a team or it's just uh, we take turns being decent parents. I- I'm not sure how it works, but 
it, it is it is nice for the kids to see the parents getting along well. Does it provide and, a healthy role model? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, there's a of lot a of a lot, lot of role model and a lot of that conversation. Most of it is just who the hell wants to be around two people that are going at it. Who the hell wants to be around mood, two yeah. people that are pissy? They're pissy with each other. You know, I mean, ultimately, you have X amount of minutes or hours on this planet. Who wants to be around people that are a bummer? And you will freak your kids out if you're a bummer. And you can convince them that life is good or life sucks, depending on how you interpret life. Do you show them your vulnerability? Um, I don't know. No, no, I don't do that. I don't really have that much. I know I'm supposed <laughs> to. You know, people do a lot of like, uh, man, life's tough and, and it's scary and show business is scary and you're here today and gone tomorrow and, and all that kind of stuff. And everyone has a lot of anxiety and a lot of anxiety about relationships and a lot of anxiety about work and performing and doing whatever. I don't have an ounce of that. I, I never have. I, it's it's kind of weird. Drew, I, do you think, what would you think? Because I don't, I don't feel vulnerable at, at all. No. You're a robot. Yeah, I'm a robot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, canned cranberry <laughs> sauce is really the only thing that... Yeah. I, know, I feel like I'm You're funnier than everyone and I can beat everyone up. There that's, you go. That's yeah. my two... That's, that's robot. My, Simone, the two ways I feel. But I don't I don't feel like I'm God's gift to the anything. I just feel like um, I'll do what I'll do and I'll, I'll make money. I'll be fine and uh, I'll be a good parent. My kids will have it well and I can fix stuff when it breaks and that'll be that. Taking you, yourself back to your childhood, surely then you would have felt vulnerable. Oh, yeah. I did. I did because when you live with people who you don't think care that much about you, you start doing the math. Like if somebody breaks into this house in the middle of the night, God knows what they'd want to steal. <laughs> the sheet off the sofa. But the, like, the hillside stranglers come up for you. Yeah, I, I do. I do remember being a kid and they had like the hillside strangler or whatever, whatever, you know, whatever, you know, uh, serial killer du jour was out there. And um, I remember being freaked out because, like, when you're eight, you can't really do the math. Like, you know, I thought I was going to die in quicksand for the first 10 years of my life because you just don't do the math. You watch TV and you go, oh, that's a pretty good chance. It just might be my pith helmet <laughs> laying there. But I, I remember thinking if someone breaks into this house, my mom is not coming in and saving me. She's going to lock the door and go out the window. And so, there's yeah, there's definitely a sense of vulnerability. But... I overcompensated by doing things that would make me not vulnerable, not in an obnoxious way, which a lot of people do where they just go nuts with the, I'm going to be a 10th or 10th degree black belt in Taekwondo and not take crap from anybody. Like not that kind of chip on your shoulder kind of way, but just in a way where I can take care of myself. I can fix things. I can handle myself. Now, I know you won't like me saying this and um, we're going to go to calls, but Mike and Drew were talking about you yesterday and mm -hmm. telling me bits about your childhood. And I have got to say, hearing you talk about your childhood just opens... It just makes me relate to you so much more. You have because to read I know, his book. He's not talking really about material. Wanna, I really want to read your book because yes, you just hearing <laughs> you talk about your feelings and get in touch with those tender feelings is, is really quite special and i think it's really oh, oh, an he'll, education uh, he'll take your side and tell you about his mother and grandmother for oh yeah i'll give you do an hour how on much them. time you got we only have a two-hour show <laughs> yeah i just you know my whole thing about kids is i don't want them i don't want them to see daddy freaking out i don't want them to see daddy falling apart or crying or doing whatever i did have a moment which was weird uh the other day i didn't tell you about this drew but mm. it was it was kind of weird i i got five thousand bucks for winning the toyota grand prix to give to my charity. And so they, there was a Catholic Big Brother organization, which I, I used to be, uh, I used to be a Catholic Big Brother back in the day before I, I had kids. And uh, I had to present the check to the organization. And as I was looking out at some bowling alley in, in, Sandy, in uh, Santa Monica, but as I was looking out at all the parents, I mean, the big brothers and the little brothers and then the big sisters and the little sisters, and my kids were standing next to me and we were gonna give them this big foam core $5,000 check, I started welling up. Of like course. I really became emotional. Yeah, I, it was like I started, it was, it was weird because I get emotional over nice stuff. Like I was looking at all these people who donate all their time to be with these yeah. eight-year-old kids and I was, they aren't their own, obviously. And I just thought, and they have to pay for everything and do everything and donate all these weekends and stuff. And I just thought it was so beautiful. Mm. There right. it is. Mm -hmm. A new, more sensitive Adam Carolla but, in studio. But today. then I got pissed because <laughs> I got five thousand bucks for winning the race, right? right. The guy oh, who who set the poll got fifteen thousand dollars. How was that from People Magazine? What? 
You get, you get 15 grand for being on pole, but if you beat the guy who's on pole and you win the race, you get five grand. What the F? So I start getting angry. Good. Well, there you go. Thank you got to trust. When it comes to motorsports, People Magazine is the foremost authority. 1 800 L O V E 191. That is the recognizable voice of the king of all podcasts, Mr. Adam Carolla. He is also a New York Times bestselling author. For not only in 50 years, we'll all be chicks, but his new book. Not Taco Bell material because he, in fact, as a teenager, was not Taco Bell material. No Hollywood Taco Bell would not have him. Uh, <laughs> He's June not up to that. He's tomorrow. not up to that. He'll Taco be at the Bell Barnes standard. and Noble at the Grove signing the book. Go to AdamCrolla.com for more info. More with Adam next on Love Line. Introducing Mask, formulated to conceal any unpleasant tastes associated with pleasuring your man. <laughs> Buy online today at sexualflavors.com. Yeah. One call, one call is all it takes. Exactly. 1-800-LOVE-191. 1-800-LOVE-191. Love Line's coming back. sexualflavors.com now do you worry about whether you're good enough in bed you see i think most of us do at some point or other and i tell you why because in the media we are bombarded by images where people are having fabulous sex all of the time they're synchronized they're saying yes 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 together they're looking absolutely perfect this is all a myth. One of the biggest sex myths around, I think, is that we should be good in bed without doing anything for the accolade. But let me give your sexual confidence a big boost right now. I am telling you that to be good in bed, it takes practice. And it often takes practice with someone you love. And with someone you love, you can communicate. So stop worrying about what you're like as a lover and start enjoying giving and receiving pleasure because that is what good sex is all about. And tonight's love link was brought to you by sexualflavors.com.
All right, a couple formalities before we get to your calls. You got to go to adamcarolla.com, the official website of our guest, to get information on his podcast, his massively popular podcast, also his new book, Not Taco Bell Material. Plus, he'll be signing that book here in Southern California all week long, uh, tomorrow at the Barnes & Noble at the Grove here in Los Angeles, and then Orange County over the weekend at uh, the Barnes & Noble in Irvine, and then the next day in Huntington Beach at the Barnes & Noble there. Also, go to Twitter and tweet Dr. Drew, at Dr. Drew is his handle. We need to know what you think his sound off should be tonight. Joe! What's happening, Joe? Hey. Well, wow, it's kind of weird to be on the radio. All right. Um, I have a, uh, my girlfriend of four years uh, just recently broke up with me on Thursday, and her reason behind it was that we need to to see, not see other people, but see, like, therapists, like, to fix each other, I guess. Um, we have a lot of, like, underlying issues, and I have a very, I have a problem showing uh, affection when it's needed. And what uh, underlying example, issues, Joe? What was that? What underlying issues are you referring to? Oh, well, she's had um, a traumatic past. She's had, um, she was sexually abused by a previous boyfriend. Um, it was, it, she was molested by him after school in eighth oh. grade. Sorry. And he was an older guy. And since then, like, I've been like the savior. Hey, Joe. But I guess. Joe, this yeah. is Adam, voice of reason. <laughs> Look. I, I wish someone would have tapped me on the shoulder. I've always said this with, all through my 20s and just went, look, you two are going to break up. Let's just move it move it on. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? If you're 20 and she's 19 or 20 and you guys are talking about going to see therapists, you guys should be talking about saving money and going backpacking through France, not going to therapists at age 20. I'm sorry for what's happened to her, Joe, but 20-year-old Joe from Arizona, you're not you're not qualified to fix what's ailing her. And, and and whatever the reason she's leaving, she's leaving. She's leaving. So that, fine, pack it up. And by the way, unless you want to do that drama dance for the next five years, and God forbid someone gets pregnant in the interim, just move on. Find a new chick. Find one without so much baggage. Find someone who's not, you know, find someone who wants to be 20 and date. You know what I'm saying? Do you have trauma on your side, Joe? My phone cut out. I'm sorry. Do, do, you, have have, do you have trauma on your side as well? Uh, no, I just, I had a, my parents were divorced when I was little, and I lived with my dad, and he's the typical guy. He doesn't show the love, really, Okay, so needed, I guess. So, Adam, what would you advise Joe to get over his daddy issues, which are very well, relevant? It's not the daddy issues, the mom who's not there right. issues. Well, and also, it's it, there's a difference between getting over something and trying to do something you've never learned. Yeah. You know, he's never learned to be intimate. He's never learned to love. He's never learned these things, you know. And it's funny because it, it does get couched as you got to get over this. But it's like saying you got to get over not being able to speak German. Yeah. It's like, right. uh, no, I don't know how to do it. Right. It's like with me, I was everyone thought I was dyslexic. I couldn't spell. Like I tell people, you're not born knowing how to spell. You got to learn how to spell. Well, if you certainly, don't know how to certainly spell, they taught you in school. <laughs> no, I I did not learn. Well, ex so explain people what happened. I went to a free range hippie school. Uh, in I went to the Billy Jack School in 1973. <laughs> <Billy Jack. laughs> yeah. So the thing the thing about Joe is Joe should learn to be a little more intimate. Yeah. Uh, and that would that would be nice. But really, who wants to go through this crap at age 20? She broke up with you. Fine. Move on. There's a lot of drama. She's gonna suck you into that drama, Joe. Don't do it. And certainly don't get anyone pregnant. There, there it go. is. Word is bond. Hey, Jessica. Thank you for calling Loveline. Um, so I'm a recovering addict and now I'm having to go through a relationship problem and I just don't know how to tell the guy. You're two years sober. I'm what? How long have you been sober? Um, for almost two years. Two years. Yeah. And what was the drug? Heroin. <laughs> mm. And do you have any chronic, you know, any infectious illnesses that he needs to know about, like hepatitis C? No, no, I never use needles. Okay. You started uh, doing heroin at what, 15? 16. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're worse than Drew Barrymore. What's going yeah. on? I mean, two years sober at 18 from heroin. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on these days? <laughs> yeah, I don't oh, know. These kids are. Goddamn sad. Yeah. Well, why do you need to tell them at all? Well, I think he has to know. It's like a pretty major thing. 
No, well, give give, give Adam specific. That's a good question. Give him specific reasons well, why you feel like he needs to know. We'll do a real world scenario. Hey, Jessica, oh, I got you a Zima. <laughs> huh? What do you mean? Why not? Hello, They're delicious. Adam. Zima. <laughs> I guess he just Sorry. needs to know because it's like a big deal. Well, I understand it's a big deal, but uh, right, Jessica. Here's the basic rule of thumb, Jessica. You don't, you don't have to tell him right away. Wait till there's clearly going to be a relationship, and he's a little bit invested in you, so he's not sort of running, having a reason to run away. Oh, and yeah. then you say there's something you know about me. It's an important part of who I am, and uh, you know I won't be able to do anything with you because of it, certain things. Let, like me, you. let me try it again. Right. Hey, Jessica, I'm going to the fridge. I'm going to grab a tequila. <laughs> you want? I don't know. All right, Clamato? <laughs> Clamato and vodka? <laughs> don't don't uh, hit the heroin Drunk at 60. And clam. Hey, Jessica, here's the deal. Coming from yeah. someone who's had to do this, uh, there's been relationships where it's been six months in. There's been relationships where it was date number one. You cross that bridge when you get there, and you don't try to make a big deal out right. of it. And uh, hopefully the person on the other yeah. end is mature enough to be receptive. Talk to your sponsor about it, too. Yeah. All right? Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. All right, no problem. Thank you for the call. 1-800-LOVE-191 is the number. Adam Carolla is our guest. His new book is Not Taco Bell Material. Bronson, thank you for calling Loveline. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. Good. Oh, Bronson. Nice name. Sweet. You. Were you named uh, after Bronson Pinchot or Charles Bronson? Charles Bronson. There Bronson. it is. Right. Of course. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. not I like him because he took the law into his own hands. <laughs> it's weird. We don't like when people do it off the movie screen, but yeah. on the movie screen, wildly compelling. Yeah. And play never have a problem rules. with it. Play, play by, by his own rules. Own rules. Mm -hmm. It's like, Bronson, how can we help you? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's not really for me. It's, I got a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, I'm a school bus driver in Indiana, and um, I've had two different routes, both one middle school, one elementary, and I had a 12-year-old spend her 13th birthday in the uh, you know, intensive care because she was pregnant, spend her 13th birthday pregnant. Then I got a different route, and her younger sister, I overheard her talking to her friend that she was two months late, and her sister's 11. Call, so, the, call the Department of Social Services. Yeah, I've, I've called CPS. Yep. I've, I mean, I've, I've called everybody. I've talked to the uh, school counselor. They said they'd handle it. I don't know what they do. But, I mean, nothing's been done. School's out now, and I don't want her, I don't know. I mean, because I held her after the uh, after school let off. I talked to her. I was like, well, are you or aren't you? Or are you just, you know, messing around with your friend? She goes, well, no, I haven't. I'm late two months. You don't want her to what? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't want her to just, you know, hide it and wait, you know, if she is. What what difference would that make? It wouldn't make it, but it's on my conscience. I, just, I know, but you, know, you, did, it, you did all the appropriate stuff. You called Child Protective Services. You called the school counseling. This is what they do. And we got to right. put that in their hands and let them handle it. Hey, do you do that move when you get to the railroad tracks and you stop even though there's no train and you open the door even though that arm thing hasn't come down or anything? Yeah, we got to do yeah. that. Yeah, can we knock that off? <laughs> because, we well, let it. me ask you this. Uh, if it's not safe to cross railroad tracks when it's wide open, then why are we doing it? Yes. Why don't I just stop and open my car door? <laughs> yeah, I have You know what I'm saying? Know. What's so yeah. different about why are you kids so precious? Why aren't we doing this? Is there something we don't know? Because if the uh, arm's not down, the arm's not down, I would argue it's more dangerous to stop in the middle of the street and open the door. How about a crazed I'm, junkie jumps in when you open the door? Or somebody slams in the back of the bus. stabbing everybody. <laughs> Bronson, I appreciate you looking after this kid. It's or great. Or drunken trucker goes right up your butt. It's, Come on. It's great that you're doing it, but you, you got to turn it over to the people that... Run that those tracks, are, baby. Are you're a rebel. Res, are actually responsible. They know her name. You've given it to the right people. She's going to have a baby. Uh, it's disaster. You know it. But uh, it's it's coming with no matter what name What if a raccoon that was infected with hepatitis jumped in when you opened the door? <laughs> Could happen. A disaster. And it just took out the entire bus. <laughs> then Especially what? in rural India. Yeah. Then what? <laughs> okay. 1-800-LOVE-191 is the number. Not Taco Bell material is the new book from our guest, Mr. Adam Carolla. AdamCarolla.com, the official website. Straight ahead. A call that is confusing because it involves swap meets. And romance. More on that next on Love Line. Put more passion in your sex life. Unlock the lust and spice up the bedroom with the vibrating massager that can make the magic happen. Try the world's best personal massager at thehappywand.com. This is Love Line. It's a groovy way of relaxing. Sit tight. Love Line's coming back.
Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Loveline, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191 is the number. Mike's microphone is not on. Check. There, there we See, go. Helps. 1-800-LOVE-191 is the number to call. Loveline. Adam Carolla will be signing his new book, Not Talk About Material, at the Barnes & Noble tomorrow at The Grove here in Los Angeles. Then June 21st at the Irvine Barnes & Noble, Huntington Beach, June 22nd, for you fellas out there in North OC. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191 is that number once again. Adam, uh, I get the sense as a long, long, long time fan of yours, a guy who you grew up listening to Loveline, grew up listening to you and Drew on Loveline, and then the man show and whatnot and all your different endeavors, I feel like you are much happier at being married than you ever thought you would be 15 years ago. Yes. Uh, being married and uh, and kids as well. And... You know, I, I realize you spend a great deal of your life avoiding things that you really shouldn't avoid, and that there's a fair bit. I mean, um, I hope my wife's not listening, but the dentist, for instance, I I hate the dentist. I try to avoid the dentist. I go nuts with the dentist, and then I go to the dentist, and it's never really that bad. It's actually kind of good. Like, I, there's many things in life that you feel like this is going to be horrible and it turns out it's good as a matter of fact for me and at a certain stage in life it becomes more of a distraction and more of a calorie burner avoiding marriage and kids than it does actually having kids and being married right so let it, me ask you this mm. your book is called not taco bell material clearly because you didn't get a job at taco bell sure <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> advice oh no let me just let me be frank would you have dated you back in your 20s? Oh, well, paint the picture. Paint the full picture of, that, of the car with the, with the stool, not with, the, not with bar seats, stool. bar <laughs> stool where he's driving, and a, and a, what, like a plier instead of a window crank? Uh, vice grip. Vice yes. grip instead lock, of window crank. Lock, locking pliers. <laughs> locking must, pliers from window crank. Uh, see, I, you see, I think you're a catch. And, and, but, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Drew is, you know. Well, there's well, he's got to paint, a he's paint the whole picture. Well, you know, it's it's interesting because there's the way you look at yourself and the way you look at your past. And there's a couple of things because when I was writing the book, I had to go through old pictures. And I don't have pictures because the way my family was structured, I didn't have cameras because who would want to capture any of this? And that's why it's not... It'd be like giving cameras to, uh, you know, a Nazi prison guards or something like that. It's like, no one needs this documented. When we're liberated, someone can take a picture. So we didn't have it cost, cameras. It cost a couple bucks, too. Yeah, my, fr my friend said, so I started gathering up these pictures from people, and <coughs> I started looking at a lot of these old pictures, and there was a couple things I noticed. A, there was nothing wrong with me. Like, I was like, I, I see myself at age 24 and go, hey, you're pretty good looking. Like, there's nothing wrong with you. And then B, I had some pretty hot girlfriends, too. Uh, I wouldn't have wanted to date me, but I did much better than I thought, and I probably could have did better than I thought, but I had this image of myself that had been, like, locked off at age, you know, from age, you know, 12 and a half, that something was wrong with me, and that was about it. And I realized that your the way you see yourself gets locked off somewhere around the seventh grade and the way you see the opposite sex seeing you gets locked off somewhere in there either you're successful or not you don't have all you can do is think in terms of oh this guy's good looking and this guy's not good looking or this guy's athletic or this guy's funny or this guy's whatever but then you go back and look at pictures of yourself and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad for me, I look at pictures and I go, wait a minute, what the hell was I doing? I should have been going out and scoring every weekend. Like, I wasn't an Adonis or anything. I was just, there wasn't anything wrong with me. I thought there was something wrong with me. And I had a good sense of humor and I could fix things. So the pickup truck didn't help. <laughs> I got to be honest with you. But I moved, but I moved, I moved from dinette seats into a bench seat. You got that bench seat no, in there, with yeah. no headrest. That's yeah. good. So, it's nice you know, to have the girl leaning on your shoulder. With the I, bench I was seat. stepping up. Yeah. Uh, and last question before we go to Dr. Drew's sound off. By the way, I got to get your uh, opinion on tonight's open forum, which is girly things that men do on the secret. Uh, but uh, does Simone at all remind you of your old British stripper girlfriend, mm. Chelsea? Lin oh my God, Lindsay, Lindsay, Lindsay. Um, Lindsay. Now she, she was hot from from uh, Hounslow, <laughs> Hounslow. Yeah, every time I'd bring, you know, I'd never been to Europe, I'd never been to Chicago until I was like 35, but I would talk to people and I'd go, oh, she's from Hounslow, and they'd go, 
oh, that's by the airport. <laughs> and then that was all we needed <laughs> to hear. That's yeah, to that. like by the airport. Hansel is not pretty. By the airport is never a good thing. No, oh, never. and I guess I, I guess the the point is is if she was from Chichester, she wouldn't be stripping in North Hollywood <laughs> if Bob's classy lady, right? She'd be hanging out with Lord Goodwood. Yeah. Out so, in Chichester. so what you're about to say yeah. now is that I don't remind you of her at all, right? I, no, she. I I liked her because she had a couple things going. First off. And all the other strippers had pictures of themselves, like in these hot, seductive poses that were up on the DJ, you know, plywood DJ wall. And she had a picture of herself from like the second grade, <laughs> which was ironic and funny. And uh, and uh, I'll say a joke that you can say on the air because it, it doesn't. But uh, she'd say uh, I'd say she'd say you can't do that or something. And I'd say you can't. And she'd go, don't call me that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you can say it on no, here. That's the second. The third thing was she's the only girl that ever punched Adam out. Well, I was drunk. <laughs> she I leveled had you. I was tired from playing she, softball. She leveled you. <laughs> Couldn't keep my I had up. it coming. No, I, I was glad she hit me. <laughs> I was glad. I really was. And she did. She she. I was uh, passed out on the bed, and she said, stand up. And I and I stood up, and I knew what was coming. And then she belted me, and I went right back down. <laughs> All right, Adam, before we get into Dr. Drew's sound off, we need to know, uh, you're a man who wrote a book on the erosion of modern masculinity. Mm -hmm. Is there anything, though, that you do uh, secretly that's very girly? Mm, I, uh, I enjoy the series Sex in the City. All right. Uh, um, you do not. I do. I, I think it's well-written, well-directed, well-executed, well-lit. I enjoy that show. I've seen both movies. Oh, well, as you know, the, the the greatest story of of all time is me high as a kite on a pot brownie, watching it. Oh my god! <laughs> I Sex in the City. The movie came out on my birthday. Right. On my birthday, and two months in advance, they're going May twenty seventh, Sex and the City two. And I jokingly say to my wife, "Well, I guess we know how I'll be celebrating." <laughs> I'm kidding. She goes and tells Kimmel. He then like gets tickets to opening night and as me and Kimmel come walking out of the theater I'm high as a kite on a pot brownie a guy from TMZ jumps out of the bushes and says what are you and Jimmy Kimmel from the man show doing the opening night of sex in the city too and I couldn't I had no answer you were too loaded it was a, it's a crazy numb it's it's on YouTube somewhere it's the craziest <laughs> thing uh ever so uh I'd say my my love and I feel bad because I I didn't Jimmy and no one else wanted to see this, and I was kidding, but yeah. I think my wife wanted to see it, and thus, that's you're, what you're we going. did. There you go. That's as good of an answer as any mm -hmm. for the girly things you do secretly. That is the open forum topic. We want your calls on uh, girly things that men do on the sly immediately after Dr. Drew sounds off. He's a man on a mission. The great Dr. Drew Pinsky. His mission to make the world a better place with the words that come out of his mouth. This is Dr. Drew sounds off. Today my sound off is brought to you by Trojan Brand Condoms, America's number one most trusted condom brand. Can't wait to get it on. All right, today's sound off is inspired by a... From the Twitterverse, a couple people on Twitter suggested I sound off about how the 70s sucked. Oh, come on! And Adam, as an homage to you, I'm just going to make a list of all the things. And please feel free to ring in with any sort of endorsement or commentary. we got to keep it quick. We've got about a minute and a half here. Uh, cars, three words. Gremlin, Pacer, Granada. Mm. You do anything else? Any MC more? Matador. MC Matador. Matador. The biggest Thanks. car on the planet on the outside, smaller than a styrofoam ice chest on the inside politics 70s vietnam watergate iranian hostages how about just color palette like when did we get into avocado and uh, burnt orange burnt right? fashion brown burnt yes. orange avocado mm -hmm. and leisure suit yeah blue yes anything worse in fashion well the real problem was is it was technology before technology it's like that television which is just a regular crappy television it's some weird plastic molded thing that looks like the you know space shuttle technology. but it's not it just yep. didn't nothing technology worked. nothing worked. cars didn't work tech, uh, uh, radios didn't work television no, didn't no work. nothing worked but it was white and plastic and in a in, in a cube and it looked cool but it didn't work it so appeared to be neoprene right finally architecture would change Shingles, metal windows, stucco, cottage cheese ceiling. Yeah, acoustic ceiling. Acoustic ceiling. And bad wall-to-wall, rust-colored shag. Paneling, rust, orange, paneling. avocado. 
and uh, and linoleum. And by everything the way, was and linoleum. everything was terrible. Hollow corridors, aluminum windows, flat ceilings, flat roofs with rocks, white rocks on them. White. It's like you're effing around with the next roofer is going to come along. And I think it was particularly bad in Southern California. We got it the worst. We got the worst of the 70s. I'm done down, down sounding off. Right. Homage to Mr. Corolla. Before he goes, I just got to say about the 70s, uh, music, cinema, physical art. That physical trumps art. art. Yeah. This is in like mm. it, cinema, Billy Jack, uh, Taxi Driver, The oh. Godfathers, oh, the first uh. two Godfathers. I mean, like, like you can name all the crap, but I could start bringing up some great stuff Look too. Out, Drew, Doctor Drew, sounding off. Adam, thank you so much for coming in, man. My pleasure. Everybody, pick up not Taco Bell material, and if you don't have a copy of In Fifty Years We'll All Be Chicks, you need to get that too. Adam will be signing it uh, tomorrow at the Barnes and Noble, the Grove, then twenty first at uh, the Irvine Barnes and Noble. Huntington Beach, Barnes & Noble, the day after that. AdamCarolla.com. You know you're the man that helped make this show. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. All right, it's time for the open forum. Pick up the phone. Call us. Girly things that men do on the sly. All that secret stuff that you do that's girly, let us know. And girls, if you've caught your man doing it, we want to hear about it. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. It's Loveline. your opinions and insight. Mother has old-fashioned ideas. Well, I don't approve of it. Here's tonight's Open Forum. It's Love Line, everyone, and we're doing the Open Forum right now. The Open Forum is your turn to take over the show. We need your opinions. We need your advice. We need your experience when it comes to the Open Forum topic. And tonight it is girly things that men do on the sly. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, Adam let us know that he he's a big fan of sex in the city. Wow. I'm not an anti-sex in the city, so I'll start w- with that. But the girly thing that I do on this slide, I am I'm big on the uh, the pedicure. Well, I'm gonna. I'm. That's gross. I'm. Why? What a waste. Why? <laughs> I think it's nice. Ugh. Good good nails are important. I have got a fantastic one here from Ferg, who got in touch via Twitter, and he says the girly thing that he does that he enjoys is he sits to pee. I think that's going to be the winning one. Well, that's not girly. That's developmentally disabled. There's not. Like, why would you do that? Sit down. He's a hypospadius. Hypospadius. He has extra hole at the base of the penis. That's all. And I'll just, I'll just, as a little caveat, I got into, I I got, I got into uh, pedicures because manly giant Brazilians demanded that I get my nails tended for, to and feet, fighting. so that if you put your feet in their face when you're trying to fight with uh, them, that makes sense. they don't kill but, you. But I don't want to even, uh, but speaking of, uh, what did you say, uh, uh, another side here, Yeah. this sitting down to urinate thing, I, I don't even want to give my wife the impression that that's a possibility that a man could do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that, that blows my mind. That's almost like chrome, you're like he's you know, regressing as Mike, a human. When you're when you're married, you did get this complaints is... about where the urine sprays when you stand. Up. Well, I'd pee on the floor. Yeah. I mean, I was maybe this is why animal. men get more tired. Maybe ladies should be much kinder to men because I forgot about that. They do, you know, have to pee quite a lot <clears> and <throat> they have to stand up. Yes, so, so, ladies, there. we need to reunite and we need yeah. to really be kind to our that's man. What I'm saying. The girly things that men do on the sly. That's the open forum topic. Pick up the phone, call us. And by the way, Simone, men get more tired because we. Um, oh. Anthony, hello. Thank you for calling the line. Mm. How's it going? Hey. It's because you masturbate more. Oh. That's true. That's true. How are you? Yeah, what's up, dude? What's the manly thing you do on the sly? Uh, I actually watch uh, Vampire Diaries. Vampire Diaries. Nice. Uh, terrible show and very girly. Um, there is an incredible collection of incredibly hot chicks, though, on that show. <laughs> like, like ridiculously hot chicks. Yeah. All, All right, right, but there you go. All right, All right. Bad. Thank you for calling. Cliff, what is the manly stuff you do on the sly? Manly name, by the way, Cliff. Hey, thanks. Uh, the girly thing I do, well, currently I'm wearing a cleansing mask. Hey! Whoa, whoa, what's that? Look at those cleansing crazy... Mask, you know, ma- mask to get rid of your, like, shrink your pores. Oh, your my pores. God. Oh, wonderful. And does it get rid of blackheads as well? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh well, my God. Cliff, you Does it are, get rid of penises? You are going to look so gorgeous for your lady. Wow. I'm, I'm single right now, so it doesn't well, matter. Well, then you okay, are okay, going to look gorgeous for every lady. Cliff, look, far be it from me to tell you what to do with your life. You're 25 years old. Simone, bo- answer me honestly. I will. For a 33-year-old man, do I have pretty good skin? 
you've just got good jeans. I know where you're going. Okay. You said that you, you're going to say that you haven't ever put a face back on. No, I'm, I would take bar soap once every three days and rub it across my face occasionally. <laughs> I'm saying that, <laughs> stop with the mask, Cliff. Cliff, if you want a lady, in, I encourage you to carry on doing masks. Because this we like men to be a little bit metrosexual. Not too much, but just a little it's bit. A fine line. Ladies will be calling up agreeing with me. All right, Cliff. Thank you for the call. Jo- uh, oh, sorry. I was about to say Jose. Jose, uh, what do you do on the slide that's very girly? Um, I wax my eyebrows. Ooh, Ooh, that's go. the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. But I have to say this no, first. Some guys can maybe need that. Do you have a unibrow yeah. if you don't? Uh, yeah. All right. Oh, I have a good gene like you. No, but I, I hear you. If you have if you have the full unibrow, if you don't do it, then it's mandatory. It's oh, not and great. by the way, I'm the, I'm the blow dart guy. Oh! oh blow dart guy! <laughs> Simone, before you got uh, on the show, the, he, this guy took a blow dart about three inches into his butt cheek, Dr. Drew. Oh, easily. Made a video of it the, for the, us. The dart was about, <sighs> the, the spike on the dart was about this long and went most of the way in. Michael, Michael, other Michael, what is the girly thing you do on the sly? Oh yeah, I go and get uh, manicures and pedicures. Well, uh, it's yeah. like Mike. I, I honestly like. I'm. I, I gotta. Ba- I gotta back you on that. I think it is maybe probably a little effeminate, but it pays off. So, Michael, why do you get it done? Because uh, I work with my hands a lot, and I wear boots sixteen hours a day at my job, and my feet and hands just get tore up. And it it helps out a lot, but I get a lot of a lot of crap for it. Yeah, if if uh, guys ever make fun of you, just say that uh, the greatest, the, literally the toughest guys on the planet, the heavyweight UFC uh, Brazilian fighters, Junior Dos Santos, twice a week, pedophile, uh, pedophile pedicures. <laughs> so do, uh, just say, like, dude, I have to do it because I'm always on the mats kicking ass. You see, I really like that guys get money pedis, not only because of how it looks for them, but also because they are getting some TLC. Mm. These gorgeous Vietnamese women... Yeah, massaging their hands, massaging their cuticles. Just seems so wasteful. I I don't go for the the mani because it is waste because my hands are disgusting. So I just given up hope. Yeah. But uh, Simone's you can't right. just clip clip your nails. No, I can't. Not the way they do it. It might. It's a disaster. My feet are a disaster. All right, well, I need you, professionals. But you have like your your teeth and nail are made out of iron. They are. Yeah, you yes. got this weird genetic not, thing. Not even crack cocaine could stop yeah. my teeth. Uh, Tina, but what are the nails girly are the things? Same, I'm sure. What are the girly get things on, you've experienced? Everybody. Get it on, Gotta hey. get it on. Hey, now. Hey, okay, so not only did my ex manscape, not only did he used to dye his hair, like, every six weeks, but he had an eyelash curler. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. What? Oh, my goodness. Was and he gay? You, he's not gay. We did it for three years. All right, listen to me, I think. Let me say something. Tina, thank you so much for the call. Let me tell you something. Uh... <laughs> There you go. Uh, I'm just. This is this isn't something that no man should do. Uh, you should not dye your hair ever, as a man. Oh, I disagree. No, unless you are in no effects and you're dyeing it some funky color, you should never dye your hair to prevent it from being its natural color. Like Dr. Drew is a grown man. His hair turned gray. He embraces it. Boom. But that's because Dr. Drew looks really hot with his hair gray. No offense, Dr. Drew. We've seen the pictures when he had the big glasses and the brown hair. And I know how, it was very fashionable and he was still very good dare looking. You. I know. I'm how, sorry, Susan. And no matter. No how matter. How dare like, you? <laughs> no, but we're, we're on the wheel of fortune or whatever that was. Oh on. My but no matter what <laughs> you may say, how a guy looks worse. With gray hair than he did with his natural hair color. Nothing looks worse than artificial hair color. Yeah, but that's a fifty-year-old guy. Bad job. Man, why? But women dye the hair routinely. Women's okay. Very girly. But that's my point. But can you tell? Gene Simmons looks like a goddamn idiot, and every guy I see around LA who's fifty years old with his jet black hair and his affliction shirt. Stop it. Your hair turns colors like leaves on a tree as the time goes by. Let it happen. But why shouldn't men be allowed to do things that are nice for them that make them feel good? I'm saying it should make you feel good to recognize that you've spent some time on this earth. Hmm. I understand. Look, I understand the desire to work out and want to, you know, kind of fight aging a little bit. But you, nothing looks more ridiculous to me yeah. than a grown ass man with his like perfectly uniform brown or black or blonde hair. Just you wait, Mike. You're 33 years old. Oh yeah. You wait. Oh, I've already got gray hair though. I'm embracing it. He's, yeah, he's dying it. <laughs> Bill. <laughs> Bill, Yo. what's the girly thing you do on the sly? Uh, I don't think it's girly, but my friends make fun of me. Tell us what it is. I got to try and keep it clean for the radio, but post-wipe, I use baby wipes. 
That's not oh. girly. That's it should be crucial. It that's be, a common thing. Let me tell you something. Is it? Yeah. In yeah. this country, yeah. Well, you are wonderful men, America. Mm. You all men should do that. That's not girly. That's it should uh, be well, men. Too bad Adam wasn't here for this conversation because he talked about in in he's got a hairy yeah. rear end. Adam referred to his anus as sent, like like Santa Claus's mouth. We had to was trying to find his anus, like trying to find Santa Claus's mouth. It was a funny scene. <laughs> but the bigger problem was the bigger problem was the the wiping was. We can talk about the wiping, Anderson. Can we? It was like he said, like trying to clean clean up clean up. Peanut butter out of a shag carpet. <laughs> Terry. <laughs> Terry. Classy. <Tell> <laughs> <laughs> but but back to Bill. Bill, I want to thank you for sharing that story, and I think that is really rather remarkable. Mm -hmm. I do it too, hundred percent of the time. Yeah. Got to do number two. I sometimes travel with baby wipes for that reason. Uh, Terry, what is the girly stuff that you do on the sly, or that you found men doing? Okay, so I had this roommate, and we used to do pedicures and manicures together forever. But I came home from work, and he was trying on my swimsuit bottoms. Ooh, that's He's a problem. What? <laughs> When I caught him, he said that he was, oh, oh, uh, I was thinking about buying a Speedo, but no. he wears underwear. Now, is that he girly? Was, he, was, he was masturbating with her clothes. Right. Is he just a cross dresser? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And slightly a fetish. But that's a girly thing he does. No one knows about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mike, Mike, <laughs> thank you for calling. Bit the brave. <laughs> you, uh, you fall in line with Mr. Corolla, right? Yes, I do. What's exactly. your girly thing? Um... Well, besides having seen 500 Days of Summer way too many times, um, <laughs> I've, I've watched Sex in the City even on my own without, you know, without girls present, and yeah. I've let it kind of leak into conversation. There's a, an episode that's always stuck with me when Miss Carrie Bradshaw, I'm sure Simone knows all about this show, yeah. um, she loses everything on her computer, and everybody she goes to says, what, you don't back up? And I've said that to friends whose computers have crashed, and I kind of giggle afterwards. They're like, what, 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 what's funny? What's funny about that? I got you. All right, man. You watch that. That's good. St still wondering what's funny about it. There's a collection of things that manly, manly men do in secret that is very girly, and it's time for you to step up to the plate. It's all anonymous. You don't have to totally out yourself. We just want to know what those girly things are. Let me ask something. Yeah. Is this day when everyone grooms, hair. Is that any longer even girly? Is that just good etiquette? I think fully shaving is girly. This is just my opinion. The grooming now, you wouldn't say it's, a, it's, so, it's no. so commonplace, you wouldn't call it even girly anymore. Well, I have to groom to, to expose precious inches. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I think that tending to that area is not girly. It's considerate. I think fully shaving to like a baby is girly. Okay. My opinion. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, interesting. It's become so normal now. Right? Yeah. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. We want your opinions, your experience, your insight on the girly things that men do on the slide. All that secret stuff that we do that's super girly. If you are a lady who's caught a guy doing it, call us up. If you are a guy who's ready to admit the things that you do, call us up. 1-800-LOVE-191. It's Loveline. Oh, yeah. Our boys, the Dirty Heads. The new album, Cabin by the Sea, in stores June 19th, touring all summer long with Modest Yahoo. Mike's a little psycho. Yeah! Oh, Simone is sexy. Get out of your head and just enjoy the sensations. And Dr. Drew is sensible and so well built. I'm a doctor. Love Line's coming back, so text your idiot friend now.
Hits Love Line, people. Right in the middle of the open forum. The open forum tonight. Girly things that men do on the sly. Hi, Jeremy. Hello. Tell us about your girly stuff. Well, I got to out my husband on this. He shaves his arms, his armpits, and his chest, and then he uses philosophy lotion. Yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> Why? Because he says it smells good. <laughs> why would the, why would no, he make himself hairless? The, the, Is he a swimmer? The lotion, I I understand, but yeah, the hairless point, I'm confused. Because he doesn't like hair. Yeah, yeah, what that's. If he doesn't shave his legs. I'm surprised. Communism, right there. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Uh, Jared. Yeah, how you guys doing? And Doctor Drew's gonna gonna be going crazy for you. You're like brothers in arms with him. What is your girly stuff? You know, I, I really do like musicals. Oh, oh, oh fabulous. Way to go, Jared. You're my perfect man. Which one do you like? You know, it really doesn't matter. There's very few that I dislike. Oh. I'm, I'm talking about Singing in the Rain, <laughs> talking, uh, South Pacific, you know, anything really. Oh, I, and I you've like got taste too. Stuff. Oh, sure. And, and Moulin Rouge. I mean, oh. there's, there's just a lot of things you can't say with just Wizard of Oz. Speaking. And and when you put that stuff to, to music and, and, and have it over the top language, like it really does speak volume. Wait, 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 time out, time out. My fair lady? Time out, time out, hold on. There's a lot of things you can't just say with words. You have to say it in mean, uh, the music the whole you know, basis like, of a musical is that it's like the least way it's like the least efficient way yeah. to communicate. Come on, it's a I'm world not. where everyone knows how to dance. Oh, it's just <laughs> lovely. Oh my god. Jared, do you go with women? Now, do I what? Do you go with women or guys? You know, I, I've definitely watched them at, at home with, with dates and things like that, and they've, they've honestly never seen have a problem with it. But it's not well, exactly wait a minute. You mean, you mean only movie musicals? You don't go to theatrical no, musicals? No, I, I can absolutely go to theatrical musicals. I was, I was in Fiddler in the Roof when I was in high school. There you go. And did you see, um, did you see the South Park on this, everybody? No. No. You didn't see the South Park on I this? I did not. Uh, anybody? Anderson? Anybody? Oh, boy. Mm. Hey, we're you, doing a radio show. I'm just saying it's it's a, not a reference that I could do alone, but it's good. Let's <laughs> let, let it ride. Okay, well, Jared, I, I really like the fact you go but, to uh, musicals. But everyone just check out the South Park on uh, men taking their wives to musicals. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. <laughs> Mike, uh, what are the girly things that you do? Uh, t- can I say real quick that uh, I work in radio, and I'm a big fan of you guys. Thanks, Thank you. Mike. Oh. Where do you work in radio? Uh, at Mount San Antonio College in Walnut. Oh, yeah. They have a, actually quite a thriving radio program over there. Yeah. I, I've talked to many a student there. Good luck with your radio uh, career. What is the girly thing that you do? Uh, I wear a girl's pants. You mean every day? Like you purchase pants from a girl's section at a department store? Yeah, like Ross or Target usually. Why do you do that? Uh, uh, I'm in a band. But so you like I'm them tight. I've been since I was like 17. All right. Like five years. Just so like you, how they look. You you wear like the Russell Brand pants, like super tight. Uh, yeah, like like pretty tight. All right. Can I ask a question? I don't want to deviate too much of the topic. Doctor Drew, does that um have any effect on fertility? Very slight, perhaps. Okay. Only people who are really having fertility problems they do they start to recommend things like letting them hang. Yeah, okay. like boxers instead so of. So just be careful, Mike. Destiny. Destiny is stage four. What uh, What are the girly things that you've experienced from uh, men? Um, well, my grandpa, uh, he watches everything me and my sisters watch, like Pro Liars, The Lion Game, um, Twilight, and Hunger Games, etc. Just like <laughs> stuff like that. How old's your grandpa? Um, he's sixty now. <laughs> All right, and uh, I guess I mean, look. Maybe he's doing that to be a nice grandpa, and he doesn't, you know, he's just hanging also, out with... Not that old. Yeah. I've got a good one here as well. Life Short Story tweeted me, and he said, bubble bath and loofah, uh, which I think is a good one. Bubble the, bath. Mm. Have either of you gents ever had a bubble bath, either on your own or with your partner? But I, I was three. Oh. I've <laughs> never been in a bubble bath when there wasn't a girl in the bath with me. But doesn't it feel good? I'm not talking about the girl. Doesn't the girl feel good? I'm talking about mm. having bubbles. Vagina. Beth, vagina yeah. is the only attraction to right, that bubble. Right, the bubble's insignificant. James. Okay. Yes. What is the girly stuff that uh, you do on the sly? Uh, I have a weird uh, fear of hair, and so I overly groom myself. Like I get my hair clippers, and I actually clip all my leg hair, my arm hair, and I don't have any chest hair, but I shave my nipples. Because it looks weird when I have like two or three hairs that just kind of stick out. How old are you, James? I'm 30. When you you clippers, you mean like a like a yeah, like know. the ones you buy at Target or something, the wall hair clippers. Right. Okay. 
Uh, thank you for the call, James. Simone, from a lady's perspective, I, I look, I understand you know, Robin Williams with his hair billowing out the top of his turtleneck mm-hmm. is not something. But isn't hair on a man something that you appreciate? I mean, would you want a hairless man? Um, I have a very hairy husband, mm-hmm. and uh, he's really, really, really hairy. And previous to him, I've had guys who are less hairy. I like to see, you know, the man beneath the hair, as many women do listening right now. But I think it is personal preference as well, like whether guys like blonde hair or, or you sure. know, brunette. Okay, fair enough. AJ, uh, what are the girly things that you do on the secret sly? Um, on the secret sly, I am beyond addicted to that show, Dance Moms. <laughs> yeah, that's that's very I've, girly. I've heard that's very good, actually. Now, J- uh, J- AJ, I have a question. Are you addicted to it because you watch it like a train wreck, like I watch Cops, or are you addicted to it because you love to get involved in the lives of the chicks that dance? You, you know what? The train wreck is what drew me in, but then just watching the drama that happens between these moms and their kids and that fat teacher that they have is amazing. Right. And I quoted at work. And oh. I always say, save those tears for your pillow at night when you're home alone. And now everybody's saying it to all their friends everywhere. Oh, my oh God. Oh, dear. Oh, my God. Hmm. Not oh, dear to you, AJ. Oh, dear for a the mother child. that says that to the child. The girly, the, things, that that. the girly oh. things that men do on the sly. That is the open forum topic right now. Brian, tell us about the girly things that you do or your friends do. Hello. How are you guys doing? Hello. We're good. Um, yeah, I have a friend, his name's Chris, and he paints his toenails. <laughs> nice. All of them? Um, yes, all of them. Because he's big into MMA, and he yeah. says it helps prevent bacteria from getting under his toenails. I, I was about to say, unless you're a Muay Thai fighter, it's, it's hard to get away with. Oh. Yeah. What, why? why? To- like, may, mayhem, mayhem used to paint his toenails. I remember he used to paint his toenails, and he'd say, like, go ahead and make fun of me, and those same toenails are going to be kicking you in the face. So is, is, is so they don't peel back? It's something I mean, about, like, uh, like the lacquer and stuff that you need to prevent stuff. you to get into the, to the cuticles, you know, like bacteria. Because, uh, like, staff and stuff is really common in guns, guys. Any type sure. of fight, fighting a combat sport, you know? So it's, it's bacteria in the cuticle. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, but either way, it's tough to pull off, man. D, what are the girly things that you do? Um, actually, I'm a girl. Oh, sorry. But I had uh, an ex who was, like, really obsessed with guns and very manly, and he used to watch My Little Pony, Friendship <laughs> with Magic, all by himself. How old was he? Uh, 23. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Wow. There's a- that. Oh, sorry. What was that? They call themselves bronies. All right, stop it. There's That's funny. That's almost beyond girly. That's, like, weird adolescent like fetishing almost you know yeah. it's weird Bronies. uh daniel yo what's up daniel my brother you are older than me what is the uh girly thing that you do on the sly um i shave my armpits and my arms because when i was in the military we didn't get to shower every day mm-hmm. and so it kind of became a habit for me and so it's been you know 10 years and i still do it hey i'm confused you, you because you didn't shower you shaved yeah, because I noticed that the hair made me kind of funky. Uh, I see. So it prevents smell. That's interesting. Uh, you, you are a military man. Yes. Do I hear a smoke detector alarm from a military man? Smoke detector alarm? That's what I thought I heard for a second, too. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Oh! You are you served our country and you can't get off your ass and put a battery in your smoke alarm? Or at least call when wow. or at least call when Adam was still here. Yeah. Holy mackerel. Well, Daniel, th- I mean, yours actually makes a lot of sense. It's girly, but it makes a lot of sense. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. What are the girly things that you as men do on the sly or you ladies have discovered that men do in secret? That is the open forum question for right now. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191, again, is the number. I, I'm trying to rack my brain uh, and, and think of like the girly things that I do. Um, I, I already admitted pedicures. Drew, is there anything else you'd like to come forward with? Because you already destroyed your manhood with the musicals. musicals. I'm sure there's something. A you get of... your hair cut at a salon, which is kind of manly. Yeah, manly? A kind of girly. Girly, I mean. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's girly. Like you refuse to go to a barber. Yeah. You go to like a yeah, yeah. hoity-toity salon. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, um, a lot of people on Twitter are saying they enjoy nice shampoo and nice conditioner and nice body moisturizers. Um, and one person fights with her boyfriend who takes 20 minutes to do his hair and she only takes five. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alejandra Maldonado says that she has a male friend who hosts margarita nights. 
Oh, that's, nice. That's just like, please, just eat a gun at the end of that margarita night because you've just given up on having a penis. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. That was an excellent open forum. Embarrassing sex toy stories. That is the open forum for tomorrow night. This is going to be another interesting one because a lot of times, look, a, a sex toy is a very useful tool in the bedroom. Simone is a sex therapist. You know that. I mean, it yeah. can be very useful. But it also harbors a lot of embarrassment around I, it. I hear it, her advocating happy wand all the time. The happy wand. It's the world's best sex toy. Um, I also want to hear, actually, tomorrow when they talk about embarrassing sex toys, not just in the bedroom, but when you go through security, mm. when you have it in your bag, oh. and it's like, oh, my yeah. goodness, that is my toothbrush. Yeah. I think a lot of embarrassing sex toy stories are going to revolve around discovery of sex toy, yeah. mm-hmm. whether you're a parent and the kid or some of the kids' friends. We used to go or over to boyfriend. We used to go over to one of my friends' houses and always rummage through his dad's like dungeon of sex toys oh. and pick on and pull them out and be like, "Look at your dad's butt to butt double dong." Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Yeah, so I mean, that's got to be embarrassing. Oh, the kids are they're ruined. Yeah, whoever those children are, they're they're ruined for life. One eight hundred L O V. How old were you? Nine. Uh, no, like Six? 17. We were <laughs> junior high school. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one is the number. Somebody's bored with sex. Guess how long they've been married? You'll find out next on Loveline. Oh, yeah. Our boys, the Dirty Heads. The new album, Cabin by the Sea, in stores June 19th, touring all summer long with Modest Yahoo. Helping people get unscrewed up for 30 years. Dr. Drew is the best. No lecturing, no sermonizing. Loveline will be right back with Dr. Drew, Mike, and Simone. Come with me inside the machine and I'll show you. My Love Link is brought to you by Sexual Flavors, who certainly know how to spice up your love life. Now, let me ask you this question. Do you sometimes get a little bit in a funk when you hear about celebrities and all their money and what they're doing with it and how they are able to buy their partners the most amazing romantic gifts? I want to flip that on its head. I saw a picture of Mark Zuckerberg when he was on honeymoon. Sure, it was in Tuscany, and it did look absolutely beautiful. But it wasn't the $1,000 suite that they stayed in that really caught my attention. It wasn't the private jet that they were getting between Rome and Tuscany. It was actually the two of them sitting on some steps, sharing a plate of ravioli in T-shirt and jeans, something that you or I would enjoy doing. Now, research has actually shown that once you over earn over a certain amount of money, and it's actually a lot less than six figures, by the way, and the basics in life are taken care of, you don't actually get that much happier. So my message to you is do not let money worries get in the way of you enjoying special time with your partner and staying in the moment. Because no matter how rich or famous you are, it is the simple pleasures in life that can really bring the most enjoyment. And my love link tonight was brought to you by Mask Sexual Flavors. Visit sexualflavors.com.
Please say hello to Dr. Drew Pinsky. Dr. Drew Pinsky is an addiction specialist. The great Dr. Drew Pinsky. Dr. Drew Pinsky, the host. Come on out here, Dr. Drew Pinsky. It's keep wonderful. Now back to Love Line. Live and unrehearsed. Yeah, it's Love Line, everybody. Remember, head on over to lovelineshow.com. You can watch this entire show with a live stream provided by Ustream. Also, a lot of other good stuff like uh, upcoming guests. Video of previous guests, the get help section, recommended reading that Dr. Drew and Simone put together. That is all at lovelineshow.com. Beth, thank you for calling Loveline. Hi, how are you? Beth, you're calling from Detroit? Yes, I am. Oh, you could be the Beth that Gene Simmons wrote Beth about. <laughs> yes, I love that song. Right, it could be. Hey, all right, so what's up? Well, I have been married for nine years. Um, I met my husband uh, actually in high school. And we've been together for quite some time, you know, just dating and stuff like that. But I am pretty much bored out of my mind with sex. Mm-hmm. Why? <laughs> Why? I just don't want it. You don't want it or you're bored with it? Two separate it's things just, that can be interlinked. It's just, I just don't feel like I just don't want to do it. All right, have you had children? Yes, I have two. When was the last baby? I have a six-year-old and a four-year-old. Did the do you want any medication now? No. This is, this is not funny. You know, it, the, sex is a really important part of relationships, and and without it, there can be big problems. And you're, you're like, but, the satisfaction okay. in your relationship, Beth. Are you? Say that again. I'm sorry. Are you happy in your relationship? Yes, I'm very happy with my relationship, and I'm happy with my husband and, you know, everything like that. Okay, and how close are you? Very close. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to shoot for that and give you a bit of takeout because sometimes, especially when you have kids, you can become very enmeshed and close, and there can be just too much closeness for you to feel sexy. So I would – have you ever tried – putting on a pair of heels and some really sexy undies and trying and really thinking, right, you know what? Like Dr. Drew said, how important sex is. I'm going to really go for this tonight. Yes, I have tried that. And did it work? I, I actually, I wear, I wear, you know, cheesy, you know, clothing every day. I, but ev- I, every day it's not going to have the impact. You need to do it. So it's super special and actually say, you know what? We are g- we are going to make an effort here. You have to give each other space to long for each other like you did at the beginning of your relationship. Because often people, nine years into a relationship with kids, and I can only imagine how sort of difficult that is, will think, why doesn't our sex life look like it did at the beginning? Well, because you're not doing the same things that you were doing at the beginning of a relationship. Right, Dr. Drew? You need to long for each other. You need to you know, yeah. adore each other. You need to flirt with each other. But I get the distinct feeling something's very wrong. So, Well, like, like my husband. My husband, he makes comments like, oh, men supposed to get bored with their spouses, not women getting bored with their spouses. Yeah, you're giggling about this. So what's so funny about it? It's because it... it to me, it's like I have two kids. I mean, not, I'm married for nine years, so it's like sex shouldn't be like that big an ordeal. Beth, you're 29 years old. Yeah. You're not. You're not 75 years old. It, people, marriages that stay together and who express high degrees of satisfaction are having sex at least once a week. 40 years from now, you're losing it in your 20s. This is something you got to look into. And so I, I get the distinct feeling that there's something from the past here rearing its head, like like, like some abuse or your dad, something, something. So well, what, I, was, I, was, I was pretty much beaten stuff as a child. All right, so. so you have childhood trauma. Was your dad the perpetrator? Yeah. Okay. Do you understand how that can affect your feelings about men? No. Okay, well... Did you have some sexual abuse too, or rape or something when you were 14, 15? Uh, yes, I was raped okay. when I was 16. Okay, magically, magically I knew that. Uh, so this is all major, major unresolved stuff that you have to deal with, and that's why you're shutting down sexually. Do you understand? I, I have talked to my husband about it, 
so you know to try to talk talk about the situation you know of what happened and everything right and, and my dad he's now dead so and he didn't really care to talk anyway your husband didn't yeah my husband's still alive i'm saying my dad you know, when when he was still alive, I tried, you know, talking to him, him about what happened. And yeah, but that, that's not going to help, unfortunately. It is not, it really, it's like going back and trying to talk to, you know, if you somebody raped you when you were three and you're going to go back and talk to them. It doesn't really do anything. It really doesn't. You, you need to have a therapist work with you that works with trauma. This is important for the survival of your marriage. It's important for this family you're trying to raise. And by the way, all that stuff you went through gets transmitted to your kids one way or another. So you, you've really got to go get some professional help with this. And, and don't – your husband can't handle this. This, is, this takes a, you know, a team of professionals a, a long time to help somebody through this kind of thing. Okay. Would that be also why I was so over-controlling with my kids? Could certainly be. And, and you know, you, you, whatever it is, it's going to be a reaction to that, all that horrible, uh, you know, beating you went through. And there's going to be a lot of difficulty being available and attuned and attaching properly all because of that trauma until you get that dealt with. Okay? Okay. All right, Beth. Thank luck. you. Right, bye-bye. Thank you for the call. Simone Bien, a very smart young lady, can be followed on Twitter. You can get a lot of good information from her in the Twitterverse. It's at Simone underscore Bien, B-I-E-N-N-E. She's about to give you a nice little tender nugget of info called Simone's Takeaway. Now, now, now. now. Simone's Takeaway, complete with sultry English accent. Everybody quiet, please. My takeaway tonight is brought to you by Mask Sexual Flavors. So when it comes to succeeding in all areas of your life, a little charisma, I'm sure you'll agree, goes a long way. Um, Charisma is very effective because it's all about how we relate to and therefore influence people in a positive way. And recent research conducted by a team of scientists from the University of Lausanne Business School shows that charisma can actually be taught. And the reason I'm talking about this tonight is because we get so many calls here saying, how can I impress women? How can I impress my boss? So here are three ways to help you be more charismatic. Number one, use your body. So gents, you can inflate your chest and use your arms when you're talking. It can make you look more important because you actually look bigger and command the space around you also roll up your sleeves just look at obama yes it is pretty hot where he does it often but rolling up your sleeves and i didn't mean that in a sexual way although i do find president obama quite handsome i mean hot as in temperature wise rolling up your sleeves but especially when there's a crisis can actually show hands-on action so you can do that in your workplace you're showing that you're prepared to get in there to deal with whatever needs dealing with It can be a sign of confidence. And finally, so your audience, whether that's one person or a room full of people, stays interested in listening when you speak. Keep your voice tone varied and always talk with passion. I'm wishing you lots of luck, and that is my takeaway for today. Thank you so much, Simone. 1-800-LOVE-191 is the number. If you have a question for Dr. Drew or Simone Bien, 1-800-LOVE-191. When siblings go at it, It can be dangerous. It can infect the entire family. That's the situation at hand that we're going to deal with next on Loveline. Going down is looking up. Purchase Mask Sexual Flavors online at sexualflavors.com and start loving your love life. This is Loveline. Loveline. The neat way to dispel the problems of the day for a little while. Don't worry, we'll be back.
Dr. Drew, earlier tonight, you and your sound off, you were talking about how bad the 70s were. Horrible. Yeah. Horrible, I tell you. But every time I hear the Black Keys' Lonely Boy, that song we does, I think about Andrew Gold's Lonely Boy from the late 70s, and I'm like, whew, so I 70s noticed, rock! Well, you notice I didn't put music as a category that I was taking aim at. Because music and cinema, yeah, some stuff made it through. Yeah, it did. The Bee Gees. I wasn't thinking of that. Make as, fun, make as much fun as you want of the Bee Gees. Bee Gees wrote a lot of great songs. Yeah, I agree. No, no, I'm not making no fun one of them. I think great. He was. He was. All right. Oh, no one harmonized <laughs> like the Bee Gees. No one. Hey, Rochelle, thank you for calling Love Jimmy Line. Jimmy Fallon. Hi, um, thank you so much for taking my call. I've Our been pleasure. I've to call you guys for forever. Um, so I have a 21-year-old sister, almost 22, and um, she just she is angry if she's so bad, and... She's extremely rude, and she gets really violent oftentimes, and my mom and I don't know what to do, and she's moving in with us again, and it's really put a strain on our relationship, and, you know, we just don't know what to do about it. How old is she, Rochelle? She's 21, turning 22 in July. She needs a diagnosis, Rochelle. You need to know what you're dealing with. Well... My mom has mentioned in conversation that she used speed when she was pregnant with her. So we've been thinking is that all? maybe it's something with her hormones. Yeah. <laughs> Forget about the hormones. She needs a di- yeah. she needs a medical and a psychiatric workup. She needs a diagnosis. You you okay. and your mom are not in a position to do that. And I I understand that, but in the like we've tried to get her to go to doctors or to therapy or something and she just refuses to go and she you have a very – listen, I, I'm, I'm confused tonight. I've been a little harsh at the outset of the show about this very same issue. I'm confused. She's coming to move in with you. In order to well, be to meet criteria for that process, she must have a medical evaluation, so I understand what I'm letting into my house. Okay. That's it. Well, very simple. Not, not, I, not, we're not talking about it. You're going to do that. And that's all. Well, I have a, I have another question. That makes sense, and I'll, I'll tell my mom that. Because here's the deal. She either has, there's really three major categories. She's either a drug addict, or she has bipolar disorder and she's manicky, or she has a severe character problem, personality disorder that makes her this way. All three have treatments, and she'll be happier, and you'll be happier if she gets under control, gets treated. Dr. Okay. Drew, I'm going to ask you this. Rochelle, I just want to ask this for other people that are, are thinking this. When somebody has anger issues, she didn't just say anger; she said she's violent. And that's yeah. different than I just have anger issues. Okay, thank you. She, she, for she's, she's violent, and she and they're letting a violent person into their home. You don't just do that. Somebody with anger issues. Mm-hmm. So I just want to uh, broaden it out. Someone yep. with anger issues, you would recommend go to therapy, but it wouldn't necessarily be. I wouldn't be as firm about it as I am right now. I mean, you know, anger issues, I don't even know what that means when people say that anymore. But when somebody says she gets violent, okay, now that's now something we have to do something about. Because she's a danger to herself and others. Yeah, you're not allowed to go through the world being violent. You just aren't, aren't, it's not okay. And and, and I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt and say she's not a criminal. She has a medical problem and it needs help. And she can be helped. Well, I, I guess I just have a question. About seven or eight years ago, she said she was molested by our brother-in-law and we have no idea if it's true but do, do you think that would have anything to do sure. with because that's around the time that her outburst started for sure and it, you know that's the character okay. stuff I was talking about and that and all, but that also fuels addiction so she may have both I wouldn't be surprised. Okay. Yeah, because she does use drugs so I don't Okay, Rochelle, don't why don't you tell me at the beginning? <laughs> Let's go get her addiction treated. Okay. Well, she, she, I've talked to her about it because we used to be very close, and she's just in no way motivated to. Well, stop here's the motivation: you don't get help. to, you don't get to live with us and do drugs. It's very simple. It's very simple. Okay. 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 All right. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Good luck, Sharon. Sharon. Sharon is here. There you go. All Hello. Right. Uh, how did Dr. Drew whisper and get your attention? I screamed Sharon and you just... just... <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's up, Sharon? Hi, I, I was just wondering. My boyfriend has been on deployment for four months and recently has come back. And I feel like my sex drive is much higher than his is. Okay. I was wondering, you know, is that like a normal occurrence if someone is a man and gone for so long and 
suddenly. Uh, I, 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 this is definitely Simone territory, but I got to ask a, for, a couple cursory questions. How, how you said he was deployed? Was he in Afghanistan, Iraq, anything like that? Saudi Arabia, absolutely. Okay, do you, I mean, but from, not not in battle. From what you know, did he? I mean, did he do a lot of bad stuff? Was he in battle and stuff? No. Okay, because I mean that that would definitely lower your sex drive if you're out there right. capping food. Right now, so yeah. what what is it that he yeah. wants? What would quiet, you like? Sort of, you know, like quiet, sort of like out there, you know, just working hard, basically just working on planes. He's a mechanic. How often would you like to do it? How often would he like to do it? I feel like for him, it's more like three times a week. For me, it's daily. Okay, that's not a big difference. Oh my goodness! Right. You're very and, lucky. And, and, right. Three times a week is a pretty good pace for a lot of men. A lot of men... How old is bi- he? Yeah. How, How old is he, Sharon? What's that? How old is he? Uh, 24. All right. 25. I mean, he should, he should be able to keep certainly three times a week up, but a lot of guys can't biologically do much more than that. They can't. Right? Well, yeah. All right. So That's maybe you can reach some sort of compromise where occasionally we do it every day, but then we take a couple of days break so you can... Refuel, literally. I mean, guys, men have to literally build up fluid again. It's about meeting in the middle when you have mismatched desires. And also look at what you can do outside of intercourse, Sharon, because my hunch is that you having your husband back want all of him all of the time. Would that make sense? Right, right. But, I mean, he's he's just been on for so long. Exactly. And that really makes sense but there are other ways that you can enjoy him and even kissing he can kiss you every day you can hold hands every day you can dance around the kitchen every day you can get naked and do dances in the living room every day you don't necessarily have to have intercourse every day to share that closeness and almost the more you push him into it the more he will retreat because it can emasculate so just be a little bit careful enjoy him I, I, i don't really understand how i can sort of make him want me more. I mean, I, I want to have more sex. Sharon, clearly. he may not be biologically up for this. You understand that? Think? He may not well, be... I mean, is three times a week, like, a, you know, is that normal? It's, that's way, a, that's it's a, a, way above average. It's above average. The average American is having sex one to well, two times a week. Yeah, one and a half is what it's think of, thought of. So you're about double the average. So, quit whilst you're ahead. And look at other ways. The issue with um, people and sex is they limit it to intercourse. Expand your repertoire, which is what I was trying to sort of give you help with, in the sense of it isn't just about physical. It's about the emotional. It's about the connection. It isn't just about having sex. It seems like you're you're like insecure. Like you need to be reassured you're retracted to him by having sex every day, which is not some. That's in you. That's something with him. Right. Well, I mean, I understand, but I it does. Like it, I it, and I, I, I mean this to kind of further clarify, not to insult you. It does not sound like you do understand. It, it sounds like, like you understand. It does not sound like you understand. It or sound, that you accept what we're it saying. It does. It doesn't sound like you understand at all. It sounds like you are still under the impression like there is something profoundly wrong with this man. He doesn't attract to me. He and you, to, for you want to figure out little exercises or tips to fix him. And what we're saying is that a guy wanting to have sex with his wife three times a week is not only okay, it's pretty darn good. So anything else... It means else, he really loves you. Right. It means there's something wrong with you, not him, that you're not okay with that. And and I am not in any way trying to uh, disparage a 25-year-old girl who wants to have sex with her husband every day. No, that's day. fine. But when, that's you, fantastic. but when you say, it makes me feel insecure, he doesn't love me, that kind of stuff, that's in you. Right? Well, Try and sit with your feeling, Sharon. I don't. I don't think you're necessarily hearing us. So I would like you to go to lovelineshow.com and actually listen to what we've said again, because then it might help it. Pro- you yeah, know, process. We're not saying that you shouldn't want to have it every day. We're not saying that women having a higher desire is in any way anything that should be judged. What we're saying is, when you say it makes you feel insecure, when your husband, in fact, has an above-average drive, then that's you, not him. Right, And I think there is a connection, and you've said this yourself, about him going away. So talk to him about what it felt like him going away, and then just try and meet in the middle. And when you do have sex, make sure it fills you up. 
Maybe. Yeah, literally. Uh, thank you to everybody who called tonight. If you couldn't get through, make sure you call tomorrow. Tomorrow night on the Open Forum, we want to know embarrassing sex stories. Excuse me, embarrassing sex toy stories. Very, got to make that clear. Yeah. Embarrassing sex toy stories is the Open Forum topic for tomorrow night. And in this crazy mixed up world that makes you think that nobody cares, we do. Be good, people. <laughs> This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on Loveline are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. Loveline. Loveline, Loveline is produced by Ann Ingold. Engineer by Anderson Cowan. Executive producer Norm Pattis. Loveline, Loveline, Loveline is a presentation of Courtside Entertainment Crew. End of message. The end of a perfect evening. Something tells me the show's over. The end of a perfect evening. I've always admired your show. Have you ever considered hosting your own talk show? They have a radio show. Something tells me the show's over.